What we found in this conference, I would say, is that actually there's an awful lot more going on than we even considered before. So science lives from communication and from discussion. Industry needs academia to work with. I mean, we are in a way part of the R&D divisions. For us to meet people who are more out in the industry is really, really important to see what their concerns are, really. To try to solve some of the challenges or problems. Interacting with someone of a different academic discipline, different species experience, that can only improve the quality of the research. Renowned experts in, on one single topic, mm -hmm. you know. We're not in, an, in a traditional meeting. Here we have a single focus, and mm -hmm. I think that's one of our benefits. It's a bit of a who's who of scientists working on phytate. We want the academics to talk to each other, the commercial world to talk to the academics. We should be able to connect the science with the actual reality. Four or five years ago, basically people were just releasing phosphorus. Now we're actually understanding some of the bits about phytate free nutrition which make it work sometimes and not work others. It's empirically related as much to IP4 and IP3 destruction as it is to anything else. I'll show you how we can formulate diets based on those digestibility values and that allows us to study how calcium is absorbed through the cell, which transporters are used and which uh, genes are expressed in that process. Phytate destruction in the intestinal tract has massive benefits on nutrient utilization and performance benefits. But phytate in the cells, actually in the tissues, it has benefits in cell metabolism, cell function, cell growth. One of the theories that we had was that inositol, if we could break down phytate or IP6 to pure inositol, inositol is reported to have some antioxidant capacity. So that's where this whole concept of uh, superdosing and phytase came about. In cold water fish species, the, the activity is not very high, but we need to use more units of phytase. We can reduce at and a half the discharge of phosphorus with this superdosing of phytase. Phytase is not really a new concept to catfish, but superdosing levels have never really been tried before. The one that really jumped out at us, so we saw almost 90% more iron in the livers of the phytase treated fish. The, the delving into the underlying mechanisms is, is really important, I think, if we're going to take the next steps in understanding what's going on. There's a lot of discussions in the swine industry now about calcium digestibility and formulating diets. So we look at this, we talked about phytase, but can we look at this and say, IP6 has changed the amino acid requirement of the chicken. That's the way I see it. We've come up with some reasonably good ideas of, of taking us forward to understand how and when and where to use phytases more effectively. What we see is the shift towards digestible phosphorus in the future is inevitable. So I think it's really trying to improve sustainability and, and precision in, in feeding. We're seeing benefits with anemia and uh, with disease that were unexpected. Whether it's in, in phytate availability or perhaps an acetal requirement, I'm going to take that home again in terms of my own research. When one realizes that the benefits of superdosing phytase to destroy the anti-nutrient phytate actually go beyond calcium and phosphorus release to amino acid release, trace mineral release, whole body energetics improvements, then one says what other unanticipated benefits might there be?